Hello, welcome to Think Tech. I'm Crystal on Quok Talk this morning, Tuesday. So listen, I've got a kind of a meaty subject. It's kind of controversial because and it sounds like a little bit passe, but before when all those toilet laws, you know, all the stupid bullshit about what, which bathroom the girls and the boys and the transgenders should go into. So that's kind of swept under the carpet now because it's not a political issue. But in fact, it's just this um, overwhelmingly new, well, I don't know if it's new, but it's a recent topic that people tend to not want to address, but it's existing and it's bubbling up. And there are issues with so many young women and men boys and girls out there who are, who are challenged daily um, confronting gender issues and identity issues. And so today I'd like to talk about that, um, specifically LGBT issues with teens and specifically, specifically transgender teens. So I've got a wonderful guest today, very, very relevant because she has like, um, she's in it because she sees a lot of transgender uh, teens uh, in her life right now. So I'm going to welcome again from the Honolulu Psychology um, what collective? Sorry, Ingrid, Ingrid Middleton, who is a uh, social worker and a clinical therapist. Welcome so much, Thank Ingrid. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so the reason I'm sorry to kind of uh, steal your thunder and saying that you're personally um, involved with this, but because you told me that your daughter goes to school and you actually know um, her friends who are going through the transgender process, would you care to share that first? Yes, my daughter started an all-girls school, and I, I was really excited at first because I thought there's not going to be any kind of you know issues or anything I think there's a lot of things that happen with girls when they're in their adolescence they focus on boys and they get kind of sidetracked if they're going into a particular <laughs> right. area but um, so my daughter um, started this girl school and it's actually been a very um, beautiful process of watching like a flower unfold they really cultivate the uniqueness of each girl um, however there's a lot of other things that I didn't anticipate and some of those things are are gender issues. Mm. So what we found is that there have been several, at least of the, the girls who are not comfortable with their female gender identity and they've decided to change. Not just one. Mm -hmm. Not just one. There are several. So, um, so at any rate, I, at, at first I just, I really didn't know much about it. I had to do a lot of research and just talking with my daughter too. And, and it was actually she that made me feel very comfortable with the whole notion of it. She said, mom, she said, Mom, people are just trying to be who they are. They're trying to express what they really feel deep down inside and that they've always felt that way. And for whatever reason, they just, uh, strangely enough, going to an all-girls school and then deciding to transition into a boy, which you wouldn't anticipate. But again, the school cultivates this uniqueness and this beauty that's within each individual, and they feel safer, I think, making that decision. So the school is aware and supportive of their transitions? They're, su they're supportive, yes, and uh, however, they don't go to the girls' school when they start transitioning. <laughs> right, okay, so let's, t let's just talk a little bit about that transformation. So, I mean, there are so many phases, right? Can you just go through briefly how the transition goes and what they need to do or what a parent needs to do to support that? Initially, I think there's just a period of really discomfort within themselves. and. And I'm, I'm a therapist, and so when I get folks that come in that really aren't identifying as, as having gender issues, I think that's just something normal that a lot of teens go through. They just have this sense of who am I and what am I about and that sort of thing. So, so I think that's normal, but then if you have somebody that, that comes in and, and they just feel like they don't have, they're not in the right body or, mm. or they're not able to express themselves in a way that they feel like would be more authentic. And a lot of those things aren't what we traditionally think of as women doing or girls doing, which is playing with Barbies, wearing pink, you know, doing... But that's a gender stereotype yes, too, right? It I wanted is. to go into that it later, is. but go yeah. ahead and, yeah. So at any rate, um, starting with that particular process, they then think about what can I do differently and how can I be a little bit different with what I have now? And if they can't really organize that in their mind and in their bodies of how to do that, then they, they go a step further and then they start looking into this other way of being, which is, I, I wouldn't even call it transgender initially, it's just like exploring different ways of being with their own gender. But as things progress and as social media is so proliferate now with just this whole right. topic, I mean, they have more to see, they have more to explore there's more areas that they can identify but with. But that's what I was going to ask is mm -hmm. do you think it's almost a trendy thing to have these kids come out um, it's not necessarily even coming out maybe it's something that they think is kind of a cool yes. and trendy experiment. Yes yes and 
And that is something that I think we go back to the psychology realm for because there is that need, I think, when people can't identify with one or the other, and they shouldn't have to, and I think I'll bring that up maybe later on, but, but I think because they're just trying to figure out who they are, it's almost like they can funnel into this third thing that isn't really identifiable, and yet it does give them a sort of identity, so it's kind of this strange combination of things that we don't really expect, and right. it just comes out in this manner. I think the dangers that come out of that are if someone just decides I'm going to 100 percent, you know, I want to do the whole sex change and everything, then they do. They go as far as blocking hormones. I mean, and these are these are people making those decisions at younger ages. Minors, Minors. making these decisions. Minors, exactly. That aren't really reversible. Exactly, they're not reversible. So, so I think it's really, really important that we get into their heads yes. and just kind of explore all the other things that are going on in their lives, what their histories are, how they felt in their own skin from day one. And, right. And so I think, you know, and I'm getting right to the point, but I think that it is easy now, like you're saying, it's a trend. So mm -hmm. I think it's easy to kind of jump into this third way of being without really knowing what that is exactly. Right. And also, like you said, social media, the impact and the influence is, and everything, you know, gender kind of definitions tend to be defined by society. Mm -hmm. And so when things are changing, when, when now the big talk of town is transgender is cool, come out and speak for yourself and find out who you really are and change it. That's morphing the whole concept of gender in mm -hmm. a way that many people can't really, you know, deal with right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So going back to the whole nurture versus nature mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. do we have to go back to that first? I mean, is this biological? How much of it is the society, society and, and community influence? So there's 1.4 million that identify as transgender now in the U.S. alone. It's, wow. And all over the world, they say it's like maybe 0.6% uh, of the entire world population. Um, so I think, you know, I think there's, there's a whole host of different things going on there and I think one of them is that, like you were saying earlier, I think people are trying to identify with something. They don't want to be this and they don't want to be that, so maybe this third thing. But then there are people that genuinely are born, they're called intersex, and so... Okay. <laughs> so, so, and I'll, that was, I was going to mention this earlier, but what is the first thing you ask if a friend is pregnant and they're going for their, let's say, third or fourth ultrasound and they come back? Is it a boy or a girl? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so why, why do you ask that? I guess because people want to know. Well, but, but oh, to, prepare, you, to prepare. To prepare for. Right, to know what to buy for yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. I know, but it goes exactly. back to the stereotype it of whether does. it's pink or blue, it which does. is stupid. It, well, and I wouldn't well, okay. necessarily say stupid, but, but, but yes, we're already kind of nailing them into one category yes. and then... So, and then another funny question I have is, you know, we, I mean, can, you can imagine Hillary Clinton in a suit. <laughs> but can you imagine Donald Trump in a dress? Almost. So, well, okay, well, maybe, <laughs> but, 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 but there's, so there's some interesting yes. elements, too, in that right. women are now allowed to be a little bit more masculine yes. without necessarily having to do anything as far as changing their sex. But you or, know what? I think going back to Clinton is I think she has the social pressure of feeling like she has to yes, wear a suit she does. to be in a man's position. I mean, that's another mm -hmm, issue. Mm -hmm. But you know, I posted a link on my Facebook page. Did you see this YouTube um, clip of this little girl they interviewed? I don't know, I forget which European country, but she was c criticizing the shopping, um, why the girls section had these yes, t-shirts that, saw that said, too. oh, cute or something. Mm -hmm. And the boy said adventure. Mm -hmm. And she challenged it. It was brilliant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I saw that too, like it had 2.3 million Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? I mean, do we need to change our whole concept of what gender means and wh why we put things into different categories? I think it starts at home. And, and once we work with that at home, then we bring it, you know, into the school. I mean, it has to kind of work on multiple levels, I think, for it to really affect a change. But, but if a child is born and then they, they're taught from the very beginning that they can do anything or that, you yes. know, there, isn't, there aren't limitations, then they don't grow up with that idea that they have to change themselves right. on the outside, that they can find it inside, and then they're able to right. go out and do whatever it is that they feel connected Absolutely. to. Absolutely. I totally agree. And also, um, you know, there's that famous kind of a premise, well, in, on the woman's side, is um, Simone de Beauvoir. De Beauvoir. She mm -hmm. said that uh, one is not born a woman. It, she becomes she, one. Yeah. That's so, beautiful. It is. It's beautiful and it's a huge um, concept because if we take that and we take it to the transgender level, if we're not born transgender, we become it. So is it society based? You know, yeah. where is it coming so from? So from, I, I have anthropological training too. So I'm an anthropologist in addition to being a therapist. And I do believe that it is 
primarily um, nurture. So I, you know, I think that when a child is born, everything that they're in, born into, I mean, from that moment on, they experience and becomes part of them. So right. there's, you know, th there's the genetic thing too, and I think there's something to be said for that. But, but I do think that, that everything that a child experiences from day one has an effect over who they become right. and how they become and so forth. And, and um, all the young kids who are watching all these shows now, do you know, I wa watched in the news recently is um, Modern Family. Yeah. As in, it, this is a new transgender kid <laughs> character in it. I mean, come on, put an extra thing on the plate to, in your face yeah. to, to, sh to, to discuss these issues. Do you think that's overkill or do you think that's actually reflecting the reality of, of situations? I think it's now? a little bit of both. Kay. I think that like anything else i think for for us to start presenting these in media we have to back it up with a lot more just research we have to show the truth of what people are actually experiencing because so many of these people go through so much trauma the suicide rate alone is 30 percent for people huh. that that feel like they That's are something but can't be that um, that is very high and mm -hmm. I remember interviewing a transgender in Hong Kong mm. and that's so wow. shunned on um, and she did take her life mm -hmm. it was very sad um, I, in fact I tried to get a guest on today who is transgender and um, because of some so social injustice issues that he was um, caught up with that he felt conflicted so there's a lot of baggage with transgender um, psychology mm -hmm. how do you even go to, a pro to, to, to talk to them and have them talk about their identity issues well, you start from where they are, and it's just like in any session that we sit down with, with somebody in psychotherapy, we start with where they are, we empathize, we find a way to connect with them on the very basic levels, and then the trust that has to be gained, I think that's probably the most important yes. thing. And unfortunately, what we're seeing in a lot of families is that there's such a lack of communication between parents and their kids. And it's not on purpose, it's just we're all going a thousand miles an hour. We have so much social media that kids are, you know, kids are glued to their phones and parents are glued to their whatevers, their iPads. You think more so than our generation growing up? The you, kids? You know, we used to always slam our door and keep ourselves away, but do you think nowadays the new generation are even more distanced from parents? Of course, because of, okay. of course. But, but that being said, there's also benefits because then they can connect with other people that would get them, you know, if the okay. parents aren't going to understand them. But, right. But I think it's really up to parents to find ways to connect with their kids and to help them feel safe being who they are in home and, and just feeling safe to tell them what's going on. And, and you create that dynamic. My daughter, we just, we sit down, we call it counter session, but, but at night after we have dinner and we getting ready to have our snack, we sit down across from each other and we literally talk about every single thing that's happened during the day, the good, the bad, the ugly. We just, we feel like it's our time. And, and if so we great. don't do it, we miss it, you know? So yes. it's just, but I feel like she's going to be safe in the world because right. she knows that she can come home to me and we can talk about anything. But what if there's something that she brought up that you're not really um, comfortable with and you don't really approve it, but you want her to share it with you? H how do you... Well, she, we have that, again, we have that trust already built in. So I think that even if she has something like that, she would, she would tell me. But we also have an agreement that if there is something that she doesn't feel like she can tell me, that she'll find a way to talk with someone about it and, and to find somebody that she can. And she, she's done that before, but she usually comes back to me afterward and tells me anyway. <laughs> oh, that's good. So. Well, you obviously have a strong relationship with your daughter. <laughs> but going back to your daughter's friends in school who have gone through the process or going through the process, um, again, it must take a lot of time, and you said trust, to open up that relationship. But what about the parents? Um, every situation is unique, just like every child is unique. And so I think what, what initially happens, and this is, this is pretty much universal across the board, parents off, right off the bat are like, no, this isn't happening, this isn't my daughter, right, this denial. isn't my son, yes. denial. And then, then there's the anger. I mean, there's the stages of grief because they're losing something they thought they had, and, it's, and this person is merging into someone that they you know, are having to learn about. But that's a great... Um, topic, the idea, are you in fact losing your daughter if she's going to turn into a man? I, re I was walk uh, driving and I heard, listened to a very in-depth interview um, about this mother who felt she was mourning for the loss of her daughter because of the transition, but in the end she felt like it wasn't a loss. It wasn't. There's mm -hmm. so much beauty in supporting the transformation and having them realize who they really are. So again, there are both sides. This is the heavy thought again. So why don't we take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll continue talking about transgenders, particularly with um, teenagers and, and, you know, trying to source out who we are and whether we do know or not who we are. All right. So don't go away.
Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for E Hanakako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on E Hanakako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. You're watching Think Tech on thinktechhawaii.com, which broadcasts five live talk shows from noon to 5 p.m. every weekday and then streams our earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on ThinkTech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? <laughs> Hello, we're back talking about deep thoughts on gender identity with Ingrid Middleton here. Welcome again. Thank you. Um, so again, we left off talking about the transitions that um, teens and their parents have to support through the process if they are in fact going to um, decide on changing sex. Now, Zuri, again, I'm going to welcome you to join our conversation today because, you know, again, just being a youth out there in Hawaii wanting to know what um, the community thinks about uh, gender issues, particularly here, and your thoughts on it. Zuri, what do you think? Hi, Crystal. Welcome. You know, I'm just really interested in this uh, today's transgender spotlight. I call it a spotlight because I feel like a third gender or a spectrum of genders has been around forever. Yes. And so I'm wondering if you want to focus a little more on what are the ramifications of making that physical change when you're really not ready? You know, you just follow the trend. Yeah, see, that's what I was trying to get at, too. Thank, thank you for that, Zuri. Ramifications of doing that change when you're not really ready, because there are so many mental, physical, spiritual energy levels that you need to really be ready for. Yes, absolutely. So I think we go back to the age, and when um, we, we can look on the Internet right now and just see these, there's countless... Um, situations where we have these really small children and the parents are, um, for any child anyway, it's normal and natural for a child to want to explore both genders. I mean, it's healthy actually to okay. have, want to express, I want to wear blue or a, my, I, have a, I have a cousin and he wears a tattoo, he wears a tutu when he wants to play right. with it, you know. <laughs> right, right. So those things are normal and, and I think what happens with parents now, they're so terrified that their child, if they're going to play with something of what we would consider the opposite sex toys, mm -hmm. that they're going to wind up, you know, transgender. But, but so that's normal. When we get into an age like teenagers, it's natural and normal to struggle with identity. And so, like we were saying earlier, I think that now that there's this transgender thing, it can be a trendy thing. Mm. And, and yet, if they get caught up in it and then feel like it's really part of their... Um, their identity and they start making these changes before they're psychologically even sure, the ramifications are terrible. I mean, and we find in the research that there are people that decide to go through the whole process and then afterward terribly regret it and there's nothing you can do about oh. it. You can't go backwards. So, um, What happens usually in cases like that uh, if they feel like that wasn't what they were? Some try to go back and live without having the re they, they can't go back and have the sex change back the other direction. So. They go back and they try to live <coughs> as they would have with the other, as the other gender. So let's say if a, if a female transitions to a male, yeah. and then decides later on that she does that he doesn't want to live as a male, he can go back to live as a female, but not necessarily have any of the sex changes because they can't really reverse it back. Right. You can't wait. So, well, I don't know. I mean, tell, 
which is right? I don't know. Help me out here. Um, <laughs> for a sex change, um, so if you're going from a woman to a man, you can attach uh, a penis. Is that right? Well, they use a lot of they the, use their, your tissue, your own tissue. Yeah. Okay, so they recreate mm -hmm. with, with they what do. you have. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to go backwards, you cannot take that away? From what? No, from what I'm, no. Okay. Not, not the same way. So the sensations wouldn't be there. So, for right. example, like, yeah, just everything would be in a different place. I guess anatomically you could do it, but f physiologically yeah. and how you would actually feel, it wouldn't be the same. But the idea you can go and switch your identity from male to female to female back to male, can you do that legally? It all depends on when they start the process. So if they're starting hormone blockers at a certain age and then they're taking the, um, the hormones afterwards. So again, if we went from female to male, they block their hormones. So they haven't developed any of the really secondary sex characteristics that they would need in order to, let's say, they want to have a baby down the road. Uh -huh. It's not going to happen right. because none of those things have been developed. Right. So, so that's, that's why it's issue. such a critical, it's a very critical decision-making time. And so what, what a lot of folks are saying is that it's probably wiser for people to wait until after some of their secondary sex characteristics have already developed so that they do have some of these things they can freeze their eggs right. or their sperm if they decide then later that they want to be able to do that because once you've done it you cannot have children I mean you can't right. like you know, if that makes sense you don't think there should be a, an age limit on this is that not is it legal to have that sex change uh, as a minor I I they have had them, yes. Wow. But I don't, I, again, this is from my perspective, from my own psychological experience, I don't think that people should be able to do it until they're adults. I, I tend to agree <laughs> with you. Um, Zuri, what do you think? Um, when, do you, are you, do you feel like Hawaii or just, you know, your surroundings, do you see more transgender issues around you or do you feel that a greater acceptance um, for gender um, boundary breaking now as you would have, uh, you know, a few years ago? I feel like as um, transgendered people become more empowered, the idea of being a third gender becomes disempowered. Like you have to choose huh. a team now. It's like <laughs> being bisexual, you know, pick a team. No, I'm both. Wow. Like, how, why can't people be both? Why can't you be both? Yes, yeah, she's saying that you have to pick a team. I mean, basically the way it is labeled now. Right, and you know, no, you don't have to. And that's what's so beautiful about learning about all of this is that, no, you don't have to pick one. So you're born with a particular biological sex and or not because there's some, like I said, there's, there's some that are born male, some that are born female, and then there's some that are actually born intersex. And so right. the, the way that they've handled that just traditionally is that um, that person can choose whether or not they want to express the female side or the male side or both. And so they're finding more and more that these people that are born with with intersex characteristics will express both as opposed to choosing one side or the other. Well, we talked about being the minimum age. Is there an age limit to these transformations? No. As, I mean, obviously if you're older and you've gone through all these reproductive processes right. and you've had kids and so to. forth, I actually think it's actually a safer bet because you've already had this experience of li as living of, as a certain way and then you decide at a later age and they found like, <laughs> they found that the happiness scale has just skyrocketed, you know, for people that do it, like let's say after age. 50. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess because you've been there, done that, yes, everything, and exactly. so you're really kind of sure of what mm -hmm, you want to do. Mm -hmm. But with, with the minimum, though, what, what do you think is the comfort zone of when you really shouldn't go beyond to, to do it? Go beyond? Or to go above. You shouldn't. What's the minimum age you think? Oh, is minimum age, you mean as far as doing the sex change yeah, and or, stuff? Or eight, I mean, 18, but again, <laughs> because it's a legal adult age. I um, still think 18 year olds don't know is, much about themselves, young. honestly. It is pretty young. It is pretty young. Yeah. But but again if you're if we're trying to force people to not do it then then I think there's more rebellion and just other things that go on that probably could cause more more right, problems. Right. So. Well, that those are good questions. Th thank you Zuri for your um, participation. I'm um, carrying back onto the gender issue and going with the cultural influence. I want to talk about how pop culture influences the kids nowadays because oh boy. that's huge. It is so huge. So uh, Interestingly, and I don't know if you're into fashion and so forth, right. there's so many now transgender models. Right. And so what is interesting is that, is that we're finding that women are looking at men that have become women and that there's a lot of competition among huh. the two huh. and, and that a lot of these transgender women are 
are getting the jobs, right? right? They're, they're wearing they the clothes. Height, they've got they're the beautiful. Right. And it just like, and now women have even more to deal with because if they're trying to look like someone, does that, I mean, so, right. so it's just, it's really interesting to see what's happening in the fashion industry. So like two decades ago, it was androgyny was like a cool yes. thing, but that wasn't a sex change. Now it's like you're crossed the border mm -hmm. and now what, right? If you Google transgender models, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I, I these are the type of pinups that you would think of your old boyfriends putting on their ceilings, oh you know, because they're beautiful. Their bodies are contoured, but right. but again, they've had sometimes eight, nine plastic surgeries. Of and, course. And yeah. going back to cultural influences too, because there's so many differences um, with where your culture comes from. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Asia, let's say Thailand, you know, it's funny that there is such a strong amount of um, gender identity blurring in that place, mm -hmm. whereas you go to the Middle East and you're shunned and you've got to cover everything up. Or in China, there is a um, very interesting matriarchal ethnic tribe that still exists, I believe, and the women run their mm -hmm. um, society. So there are so many different concepts of their, where you place mm -hmm. in the family, that how much does culture, how, how much should wow. we respect that? I, so I, you were bringing up, I'll just bring this up quickly, but in Iran, yeah. um, they don't allow any kind of um, same-sex relationships. Right. That's considered um, evil and they'll, they'll be executed yeah. or whatever. They do, however, promote transgender sex change operations. So they have many, many, many clinics that people go to. So, But, but the, the terrible thing about that, though, is that someone can be in love with someone of their same sex and not be able to have that relationship, they're forced into having then the sex change and they don't necessarily oh. want that. So, but there's a lot of the sex change operations going on just so that people can, you know, have validity for their relationship. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, you know, we just opened up a little can of worms. We can't really complete. And unfortunately, we're, we're running out of time. So in this short time left, do you have some words of advice or just directional um, perspective on how we can embrace this new issue and how parents of concerned um, teenagers can work with what they have and bring them in the right path? I think number one is just be curious as opposed to being judgmental or even fearful. And by being curious, we ask questions. We want to find out more about what is going on in our children's minds without jumping to conclusions. And just to remember that these, these children, our children, are exploring who they are and there's just another way to do it now. There's a new way to do it. And so I think it's just accepting to whatever it is that they say without judging, but also not jumping into something right off the bat just because you want to fix it or because you want to make it better. So it's about just taking the time to really reflect. It just goes back to basic communication with, with your kids. Communication, mm -hmm. all right? And that's what we're doing here at Think Tech. So thank you so much for communicating with us and continue communicating with your loved ones and enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much, Thank Ingrid. you. <laughs>